Lately I've been running statistical studies on certain stocks to see if product releases, especially in the tech industry, make any difference on the stock price after the release. So I've done this already for Windows and for Intel. Um, whenever there's a Windows update, people expect that something's going to happen to Microsoft stock. And whenever there's a new Intel chip, some if you look at the message boards for Intel, people start to talk about how Intel is going to skyrocket or whatever, right? So what I did was I looked at Windows and I looked at Intel, and recently I just looked at Apple, and I found some interesting results. Now for my Windows and Intel, it was the opposite of interesting in that there were a lack of findings. So what I did was I looked at all of the more recent Windows versions, and I looked at whether the stock price went up at a unexpected rate the day of the release, five days after the release, ten days after the release, and one month after the release. And what I mean by an unexpected rate was um, if you look at the capital asset pricing model, you can you can estimate how quickly the stock will go up um, just overall over a long period of time. Obviously I don't want to compare a stock that's constantly going up like Apple to zero because it's always going to give you a positive result. So you've got to compare it, you've got to kind of normalize the stock and compare the earnings, um, not the earnings, but the stock movement after the release to that expected gain. And by doing so, you get to see whether the release of the new version of Windows or the release of a new Intel chip, there's a bunch of code names for the Intel chips, um, have any effect on the stock price. Now it looks like they do, because it looks like Windows stock, uh, Microsoft stock typically goes up, not in all cases, but typically it goes up. Um, so I set these two hypotheses, I ran a statistical analysis in R, and I came out with results. And I did this study twice actually. I did it on the days after the release, and I did it on the days after the uh, earnings report tied to that release. Okay, so for Intel, everything was negative. Everything was just insignificant. These p-values being higher than 0.05 imply that there's no real correlation between the new chip releases and the stock price movement post those releases. Okay, so it was kind of underwhelming. And the same with Windows. After the releases of the new Windows versions, we didn't have any significant p-values. They were all above 0.05. However, after the results, we had a few that were significant. Unfortunately, for people who like Microsoft, they were negatively um, significant. So I didn't actually put the numbers in here, but what happened was the Microsoft stock dropped after the earnings reports tied to these new Windows versions came out. And that's probably because people were expecting more from the Windows upgrades. So the takeaway from the Windows study would be don't buy the stock after a Windows upgrade because generally the stock is going to drop a bit after the earnings reports tied to that release. Um, now you're probably more interested in Apple than either of these and you should be because Apple is a growth stock whereas these two stocks are value stocks. So value stocks go up very slowly um, whereas growth stocks go up quickly but in a less stable, less reliable fashion. And we usually like to know when those breakouts, when those upward surges are going to occur with the growth stocks. Now Apple is a growth stock, so it would be interesting to perform the same study on Apple. Whereas Intel and Microsoft were value stocks, you might expect these results to be kind of boring. But Apple should be interesting, right? Well, I did the exact same study, and we I looked at the results for after the products came out, as well as before the, or sorry, after the earnings reports tied to those products. So here are the products I looked at. Everything in recent times that were tied to a stock that was above $5. So anything that's not 
anything that's post penny stock Apple, basically, that's generally that's genuinely a new product. So I'm not talking about like um, an updated MacBook Air or iPhone one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead, we're just looking at the initial releases and what happens after those releases. Now, I haven't written the article on Seeking Alpha yet, but I just performed the study and I wanted to put this video out there. Seeking Alpha readers will be able to see this video as well. Um, so here are the t-tests for the uh, stock price after the release. And if you look at these p-values, you see that they're all above 0.05. So it's basically the same as the Microsoft results in that all the p-values were insignificant. So the conclusion would be that after the product release, nothing really happens to Apple stock at least within a month. However, and I didn't want to do the whole study again because it's really, really time intensive to get the earnings reports values, um, the dates, and then track the values to those earnings reports. And I couldn't really find them all for Apple because going all the way back to what, what was the first one here? I believe iPod. Oh, I did include iPod. Okay, I guess I included iPod. Well, going all the way back to iPod is not gonna I couldn't find the earnings reports that far back so what I did was I just took the end of the month tied to the earnings report two months after the product release so it's stable for everything and because there might be a little bit of um, error in there I did a very very conservative capital asset price um, estimate so if I get a p-value then the p-value would be um, actually un overestimated so if it's below 0.05 then it's super significant and the actual result is, I just wrote this article, uh, the code's a bit different, but the actual result is that Apple is significantly, the Apple stock is significantly tied to the earnings report of Apple after a product release. Where is that p-value? Here's the p-value. It's super tiny. It's less than one. What that means is, oh, by the way, it's it's positive. The mean was positive. So what that means is, if you're looking to buy Apple stock, or if you're already holding on to Apple stock, and you want to get in on more Apple stock, you got two ways to play it. You got a super safe way where you track the sales of a new product. So recently, Apple Watch and Apple Music both came out. Track the sales of those, and if you believe that the earnings report's going to be good, then by the by more or by the stock okay um, the easier way would just be to buy the stock prior to the earnings report doesn't matter when just buy it prior to the earnings report because in the past out of all of the products I looked at all of the um, earnings reports have been unexpectedly high have led to unexpectedly high changes in Apple's stock price except for except for I think it was iPod Okay, so generally, if you're looking to buy Apple stock or if you're looking to get into uh, get more into Apple, if you're already invested, buy before the earnings report. Don't worry about the actual product release itself. Wait a couple months and buy. So save up your money after a new product is released. Put some money aside and say I'm going to buy Apple later. Or if you're willing to take the risk, you could just buy it then. But the study is basically telling us um, the best time to buy is prior to an earnings report because that's when you can most likely expect a breakout.